Okay, this is part three of Village Life in America, the excerpts um, in part two. As you know, if you hopefully, hopefully read or listened, Abraham Lincoln, the news of Abraham Lincoln being assassinated has just reached Canandaigua, and there is great sadness and mourning all throughout Canandaigua. So, Wednesday evening, April 19th, 1865. This being the day... This being the day set for the funeral of Abraham Lincoln at Washington, it was decided to hold the service today instead of Thursday as previously announced in the Congregational Church. All places of business were closed, and the bells of the village churches tolled from half past ten to eleven o'clock. It is the fourth anniversary of anniversary of the first bloodshed of the war at Baltimore. So it's the anniversary of Fort Sumter. It was said today that while the services were being held at the White House and Lincoln's body lay in state under the dome of the Capitol, that more than 25 million American, millions of people all over the civilized world were gathered in their churches weeping over the death of the martyred president. We met at our church at half past 10 o'clock this morning. The bells tolled until 11 o'clock. When the services commenced, their church was beautifully decorated with flags in black and white cloth, wreath, mottos, and flowers, and galleries and all, the galleries and all. The whole effect was fine. There was a shield beneath the arch of the pulpit with the text upon with this text upon it. The memory of the just is blessed. It was beautiful. Under the choir loft a picture of Abraham Lincoln hung amid the flags and drapery. Thursday, April twentieth. The papers are full of the account of the funeral obsequ obsequies of President, I believe that means like the funeral speeches, of President Lincoln. We take Harper's Weekly, which is a magazine, and every event is pictured so vividly that it seems as though we were eyewitnesses of it all. The picture of Lincoln at home is beautiful. What a dear, kind, kind man he was. It is a comfort to know that the assassination was not the outcome of an organized plot of Southern leaders, but rather a conspiracy of a few fanatics who undertook in this way to avenge the defeat of their cause. It is rumored that one of the conspirators has been located. April 24th. Fanny Gaylord and Kate Lampton have returned home from their Eastern trip and told us of attending the president's funeral in Albany because after the president, after Lincoln was, um, and after the funeral service in Washington, D.C., they put his body on a train, and he went up the East Coast towards New York, and then across New York State and out to Illinois, and they held funeral possessions in different places along the way. Um, so this was in Albany. And uh, the pu president's funeral in Albany and I had a letter from Bessie Seymour, who was in New York, saying that she walked in the procession until half past two in the morning in order to see his face. They say they never saw him in life, but in death he looked just as all as in all the pictures, as just as all the pictures represent him. We all wear Lincoln badges now, with pin attached. They are pictures of Lincoln upon a tiny flag bordered with crepe. Susie Daggett has just made herself a flag six feet by four. It was a lot of work. Mrs. Noah T. Clark gave her one, gave one to her husband upon his birthday, April 8th. I think everybody ought to own a flag. April 26. Now we have news that J. Wilkes Booth, who shot the president and who has been concealing himself in Virginia, has been caught and refusing to surrender was shot dead. It has taken just 12 days to bring him to retribution. I am glad that he is dead if he could not have been taken alive, but it seems as though shooting was too good for him. It may be the best way to dispose of him. Mr. Morse called this evening, and he thinks Booth was shot by a lot of cowards. The f and he thinks Booth was shot by a lot of cowards. Oh, the flags have been flying all day since the news came, but all, excepting Albert Granger, seem sorry that he was not disabled instead of being shot dead. Albert seems able to look into the beyond and also to locate dispirited, departed spirits. His latest 
is that he is so glad that Booth got to H blank L, H E double hockey sticks, before Abraham Lincoln got to Springfield. Mr. Fred Thompson, now Mr. Fred Thompson is the um, person behind the Thompson Hospital, um, Sonnenberg Park, etc. He and um, uh, Mrs. Thompson. Um, so Mr. Fred Thompson went down to New York last Saturday while and while stopping New York City, that is, and while stopping a few minutes at St. Johnsville, he heard a man crowing over the death of the president. Mr. Thompson marched up to him and collared him and landed him nicely in the gutter. So this guy was um, happy and celebrating Lincoln's Lincoln being shot. So Mr. Thompson went and punched him in the gut. The bystanders were delighted and carried the champion to a platform and called for a speech, which was given. Quite a little episode. Everyone who hears the story says, three cheers for F.F. F. Thompson. May 10th, Jeff Davis, that's Jefferson Davis, was captured today in Irwinsville, Georgia, when he was attempting to escape in women's apparel. Mr. Green drew a picture of him, and Mr. Finley made a photograph from it. From it. We brought, bought one as a souvenir of the war. The big headlines in the paper this morning say, The hunt is up. He is brandished. He, he is brandished the bully, a bowie knife, but yieldeth to six solid arguments. At Irwinsville, Georgia, about daylight on the 10th instant, Colonel Pritchard, commanding the 4th Mi Michigan Cavalry, captured Jeff Davis, family, and staff. They will be forwarded under strong guard without delay. The flags have been flying all day, and everyone is about as pleased over the manner of his capture as over the fact itself. May 25th. I wish I could have been in Washington this week to have witnessed the grand review of Meade's and Sherman's armies. So what they're talking about is there was a huge parade of the victorious Union armies all marching through Washington, D.C., a big celebration parade in Washington. So that's what she's talking about. The newspaper accounts are most thrilling. The review commenced on Tuesday morning and lasted two days. It took over six hours for Meade's armies to pass the grandstand which was erected in front of the president's house. It was witnessed by the president, Generals Grant, Meade, and Sherman, Secretary Stanton, and many others in high authority. At 10 o'clock Wednesday morning, Sherman's army commenced to pass in review. His men did not show the signs of hardship and suffering which marked the appearance of the Army of the Potomac. The scenes enacted were historic and wonderful. Flags were flying everywhere, and windows, doorsteps, and sidewalks were crowded with people eager to get a view of the Grand Armies. The city was full of strangers who had come to see the site as on Inauguration Day. Very soon, all that are left of the companies who, will, who went from here will be marching home with glad and gallant tread. June 3rd, I was invited up to Sonnenberg yesterday, and Lottie and Abby Clark called for me at 5.30 p.m. So Sonnenberg is... Um, you know, right out in front of the middle school, the huge mansion, um, which is now a park and museum across from Sonnenberg Park. Um, so she went to visit, and she went to Sonnenberg Park. Um, no, let the, da, 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 da. They called uh, called for me at 5.30 p.m. with their pony and wagon. Jenny Rankin was the only other lady present, and for a wonder, the party consisted of six gentlemen and five ladies, which has often not been the case during the war because the men were all off fighting. After supper, we adjourned to the lawn and played croquet, a new game which Mr. Thompson just brought from New York. It is something like billiards, only a mallet is used instead of a cue to hit the balls. I did not like it very well because I couldn't get the ball through the wickets, as I wanted to. We all sang, sang, we sang all the songs, patriotic and sentimental, that we could think of. Saturday, April 8th. <coughs> Excuse me. What excitement there must have been in Washington yesterday over the execution of the conspirators. 
it seems terrible that Mrs. Seward would have deserved hanging with the others. I saw a picture of them all upon a scaffold, and her face was screened by an umbrella. I read in one paper that the doctor who dressed Booth's broken leg was sentenced to the dry tortugas. That's a prison. Jeff Davis, I suppose, is glad to have nothing worse served upon him thus far than confinement in Fortress Marone, or Monroe. I'm sorry. It is wonderful that 800,000 men are returning so quietly from the army to civilian life that it is scarcely known, save by the welcome which they receive in their own homes. Um, skipping ahead, 1866. She is 23 years old. February 13th, our brother James was married today to Louis Livingston James of New York City. February 20th, our society, which is a club or organization she's a member of, it, which she was president of actually, is going to hold a fair for the freedmen, the freedmen being the former slaves who have now been freed. So they're having a fair to raise money for them in the town hall. Susie Daggett and I have been there all day to see about the tables and stoves. We got Mrs. Binks to come and help us. February 21st, been at the hall all day trimming up the room. Mr. Thompson and Mr. Backus came down and if, not, if they had not helped us, we would not have done much. Mr. Backus put up all the principal drapery and made it look beautiful. February 22nd, at the hall all day, the fair opened at 2 p.m. We had quite a crowd and in the evening took, took in over $300. Charlie Hills and Ellsworth Daggett stayed there all night to take care of the hall. We had a fish pond, a grab bag, and a post office. Anna says that all the smart people in the post office says they had all the smart people in the post office to write letters. Mr. Morse, Miss Arcat, Albert Granger, and herself. Someone asked Albert Granger if his law business was good, and he said one man had thronged to hit into his office one day. It's kind of a joke saying that it's not very busy. February twenty third, we all took two hundred we took in two hundred dollars today at the fair. We wound up with an auction. We asked Mr. Mrs. George Wilson if she could not write a poem expressing our thanks to Mr. Backus, and she stepped aside for about five minutes and handed us the following lines, which we sent to him. We think it is about the nicest thing in the whole affair. I didn't reprint the poem, sorry. Canadagua, September 1st. A party of us went down to Canadagua, down to the Canadagua Hotel this morning to see President Johnson, General Grant, Admiral Farragut and many other dignitaries. The train stopped about half an hour and they all gave brief speeches. So President Andrew Johnson, Ulysses S. Grant, they were all passing through Canadagua on the train. Um, the Canadagua Hotel was down near the railroad tracks. Um, so the train would have probably stopped there for a short time. Um, so that's pretty cool that the President and Ulysses S. Grant were in town. Um, 1867, age 24, November 13th, our brother John and wife and baby Pearl have gone to London, England to live. December 28th, a large party of Canadaguans, Canadaguans went over to Rochester last evening to hear Charles Dickens lecture and enjoyed it more than I can possibly express. He was quite hoarse and had small bills or little printed papers distributed through the opera house with the announcement, apologizing for his horse voice. Um, now, I ending it there, she goes on and keeps the diary for a few more years um, until 1872, um, when eventually she stops. But I wanted to, to get the stuff about the Civil War mostly. I left in the part about Charles Dickens at the end because you're familiar with the Christmas Carol. Um, you can read the entire book online for free at this website here if you're interested, and hopefully you have enjoyed it and learned something from this fine reading. Thank you.